Right? Now in vector notation you have magnitude and, and direction. Just like this is all the same information, that's the same as that. So if you know how to do this, you know how to do this. So the magnitude is represented by the absolute value Yeah, so we're going to call this vector u and then we're going to give it some notation a, b. We name our vectors like u and b, those are popular names for vectors. So the magnitude of u is just the radius of the corresponding polar coordinates. The direction of the of u is just the corresponding theta from the points out in space. So you can treat them like points and get the same information. Nothing to it. That's all there is with a vector. It's just a new notation to talk about your x, y coordinates and your polar coordinates. Now there is some much deeper things that are eventually going to go on with vectors, but you're not worried about that right now. We'll, we'll stretch your brain in that area later. This is just getting you to accept that there is this thing called a vector that can do something to another vector out in space, and we can calculate this information using polar coordinates or rectangular coordinates, whichever one we need at any given time. And we can use some trigonometry to find out solutions of what happens when they hit each other, or when they do stuff with each other. Or just throw up that Jacobian. Or we can just do some cross products and call it a day. <laughs> but anyway, we'll just we'll let that one go. How did you arrive at me? Then you know you have fun. Cross products are like this. Boom. So you started somewhere and your first vector did this. Mm -hmm. And then you have some second vector that does like this. So the well, we're just going to take this thing and we're going to put it right here. We're going to say, to add two vectors together, so I'm going to add them. I'm going to pick this one up and go, well, this one starts somewhere and it goes like this. So it's gonna, I'm gonna start it right here and have it go like that. And there are the two vectors added together. Okay. And the resultant of adding those two things together is this little piece right there. Oh, all right, all right. I am just, so what did I do here? I made a triangle. And I can solve this triangle using some geometry to figure out what this angle is, using the law of cosines to figure out the magnitude of this, and using the law of sines to figure out what this angle is over here. And that's what all the word problems are. Figure out this angle right here because you're going to be given these two links and we're going to have to figure out this angle. We'll have some information. We'll be able to figure this one out. Once we figure this one out, it's law of cosines to figure out that one, law of sines to figure out that one, and, and or that one, and then we're done. We've completed the triangle. And we can answer whatever question they subsequently want us to answer. So everything is triangles? Yes. Yes. It is. So what we're going to do, what we're asking for, so you've plotted this thing. Yeah. What we're asking okay. for is, so in this case, what is this angle? You hadn't done logarithms. And how long? A is logarithm undoes an exponent. So you're right, that would be the next step. But What's its angle and how far away from the, from the origin? It is on the, it's between uh, plug my zero and one. Okay, well how do we figure out?